Hi, now because I do a YouTube film every week, I have to work quite a bit in advance of myself. So sometimes I've had nine films loaded, ready to go. At the moment, I think it's only about four or five, but I've had a bad week. This week, my car was stolen just a few days ago. No cameras or lenses in it, but there's hides, there's stools, there's two tripods, including the wonderful Miller tripod head that I recently bought and I've mentioned on previous videos, TomTom -tom binoculars, but even the small things like coats, hats, Wellington stuff, I can't take it all out of the car every night, put it back in again in the morning. So it's all gone, all lost. So there may be a gap in my YouTube films in the near few weeks. It's going to take me a while to catch up on this all financially. Hopefully the car insurance is going to pay out this week coming. But anyway, it's a major blow. So today I'm going to do something totally different outside of my comfort zone. I'm going to photograph people. Now I'm going to try and adapt some of the attitudes I have to bird photography to my people photography. Now when I photograph a bird, the first thing I look at is the background and the perch. And if they're not right, I don't bother taking pictures. So to photograph people, you've got to have an interesting background. So I've come to the Avoncroft Museum in Bromsgrove in the West Midlands. And this is part of a club deal. The Arden Camera Club is running a, a do here today where they've got lots of people come along to be photographed. They're called the Ragged Victorians. And this is going to be the perfect backdrop to it. The Avoncroft Museum is an outdoor display of old buildings, most of which have been transported here. It's ideal settings for photography. But first of all, I wanted to know who the Ragged Victorians were and what they did. Is there a reason you particularly do the Victorian period? Uh, I've always been interested in history, particularly 19th century history, and I was looking to get back into reenactment after some years of being away, and I came across the Ragged Victorians, and they were just such an outstanding group. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I joined them, really, because of the quality of the group. Right. Okay. And this sort of thing, do you do across the country, the whole of the UK, or is it Midlands? Yeah. Um, we do quite a lot down south, Wales, West Midlands. We don't tend to get too far north because a lot of the members are in the south and it's a heck of a long lot of travelling for people. Right. Um, so sort of Midlands down generally. We have been further north. We've been up to Northumberland. OK. And is it primarily for photographers or...? No, it's primarily things? for the public. So most of what we do is living history displays. Uh, so we go to historic sites, museums, etc., and, and to educate the public about the Victorian period. But we also do photo shoots and things like yeah. that for photographers as well. Yeah. We, we tend to get a lot of photographers come to the public events anyway. Most of the buildings you can get inside, and then you have wonderful settings with shafts of light coming through the open windows. Photographically, it couldn't be better. When you have shafts of light coming in, you've got to be very aware you're going to overexpose the picture very readily. So you need to underexpose. Typically a shot like this, about one stop underexposed. Now there are both advantages and disadvantages to doing things like this as a group. But one of the big advantages, especially when you're a novice like me, is seeing what other people are doing. Very helpful to get ideas from other people. Notice I'm in the shade. I didn't take pictures in the sunlight. And even then, you still have to underexpose a bit because the face is the palest part of the picture. So this would be about one third of a stop underexposed. And once you start taking pictures, you take a lot of pictures. Vertical, horizontal, small in the frame, big in the frame, just like bird photography. A disadvantage is it does get a bit crowded in certain places, but the real problem is the model can only look at one lens at a time, and usually you want the model looking down your lens, not always, but frequently. And so sometimes when there's a crowd, you walk away and come back later. And then when you get your opportunity, you talk to the models and you tell them when you want them to look down your lens. So you're making that eye contact. I liked this window frame, so I put several of the models in this picture at some point. Throughout the day, I only used two lenses, the 7-14mm OM lens, which is a very wide-angle one, and their 12-40mm, slightly more telephoto, but not much. 
At times it did get a bit sunny, so always you were looking for the shade. You wanted your subject out of the sunlight. ISO 1600, exactly the same as I use for bird photography. Just telling the model here to look right down the lens, give me eye contact, vertical shots as well as horizontal. You're getting, no. you're getting better. Oh, well, fantastic. Keep, keep Thank you. Look round the edge of the frame there. Now, I'm a novice at photographing people, but this man has been photographing people for longer than I've been photographing birds, Mr. Bob Moore. So what do you look for when you're photographing people? I look for character in the first place because you've got to have someone that's worth photographing. Unfortunately, some people haven't got that sort of character, but I look for interest, I look for backgrounds, I look for everything within the picture space. And you've got to talk to people as well. The biggest failing of many club photographers is they don't talk to models. So you've got to direct them, but in a friendly way. So your surroundings are very important. So notice I've stood the reenactor or model against the blue door. And I haven't put him centrally in the frame, he's offset slightly. And not always do I want the eye contact, but usually I do. So I just say, look at the lens, please. Something I didn't think about on the day was how close should my model be to the background? Here I'm using the wall, I like the wall, but should I have had the model further away from it rather than close up? And almost every picture I took, the model was close up to the background. Next time I would have them further away. Notice here the model is in the shade, you don't want them in the sunlight. I've said this before on my YouTube channel, but the biggest single advantage of digital photography, and it has many advantages, but the biggest one of all, is the ability to review your pictures as you go. When I'm on a trip, I like to download my pictures every night, every lunchtime if I get the chance, to a laptop where I can have a quick look at the pictures and I learn and I see what I've got to redo tomorrow. Now I haven't brought a, a laptop with me here today, but after two and a half hours of photography, I'm stopping, I'm going through the pictures, seeing what I can do better than I've already managed. With that dark background, I know I've got to underexpose, and I'm just doing that instinctively. It'd be one stop underexposed. That was just one third of a stop. Just making use of that rustic barrel. And a very nice indoor settings here. The settings are so important. This was one of my favorite locations. but having that soft light, very, very important. And once you've started taking pictures, take a lot of pictures, take them from different angles, different image sizes, move around a bit. You don't judge the best picture until you get home and get them on the computer where you can see them properly. And I don't always want people looking at the camera, just most of the time. So here I just ask them to look at each other and talk about something, anything. I found the youngsters more difficult to photograph. They don't look down the lens when you want them to. Some of the reenactors are better than others. In fact, some of them are a dead loss. I'll finish off with my favourite two pictures of the day. And both images are light because of the settings and the lighting. It was a wonderful opportunity to take pictures. I've enjoyed it, it's been a challenge and I felt I got more confident about what I was doing as the day went on. But I've enjoyed it, got another YouTube film out of it. Whether there's gonna be a gap in my YouTube films now until I get myself sorted out again after the theft of the car, I don't know. Thanks for watching.